And I want to say something really short because the best of speech that is that which is short and I know you guys probably have better things to do but I want to say something really short and that is that one of the wise people once said that the heart is like a house that ha has six doors and you live inside of this house and you've been told, you've been guided to protect these six doors to avoid letting anyone and anything in from these six doors anything evil that is and those six doors my dear brothers and my dear sisters are the tongue to begin with so all of this time, all of this time that you spent on your tongue staying away from ghibah all of this time that you spent on your tongue trying to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reading the Quran day in and day out time in and time out indulging yourself in the worship of Allah azza wa jal keeping your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah azza wa jal don't let that go to waste don't let the enemy seep through through this gate of your house and that's your heart when you finish Ramadan make sure you still remain in the ranks of those whom Allah's Prophet وسلم, says about that Al Bayt al Ladi Yukra'u fihi al Quran Tatara'a lahu Yatara'a lahu Ahlu al Sama Kama Tatara'a al Nujumu li Ahlu al Ard that the house in which the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recited all of the people, the committee, the assembly of the heavens they look and search for this house or it seems to them just as the stars seem to to the people of the earth as in it's so vivid and so clear, so bright for the people of the sky all those nights of reciting the Quran that you did do not let that go to waste Keep that gate sealed. Keep that gate protected. Continue in the remembrance of Allah Azza And then the second thing is the sights, al basar, the eyes, the gaze. And that's your second gate. You got to keep it protected. Some of the ulama, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have his mercy upon them mentioned that the eyes are like a garbage chute and your heart is like that place where all of the garbage is collected the more you look at haram things haram objects things that is that you're that is impermissible for you to look at the more garbage begins to pile up in your heart and the heart is just a vessel it only has a limited amount of room. Either you fill it up with the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal and all of those things that come with the worship of Allah or you fill it up with garbage and evil and all of that through looking at that which is Muharram. Keep your gate, keep your gazes protected. And that's your second gate. And then your third gate, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, is your ears. That's your ears. Whenever something muharram that you hear, try your best. If you put away the M&M today, if you put away the 50 cent, all of this Ramadan, keep it away from you. I don't know if that's in style nowadays, but if that's what it is, then keep it away from you now. You were able to do it all of this time, 25 days, 26 days. It's going to be a 30 day cleansing process that you went through. Your ears heard nothing but the recitation of our imma, of the imams. Your ears not heard nothing but when you were driving around, you put a cassette of the Quran. That's all you heard, or that's all you tried to hear. And if you didn't, then try your best to hear it. There's still some time left. But don't change that. Keep that gate sealed. Keep it protected. Don't let your heart become at rust. Don't let your heart get rusty 
And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said in a hadith, in al quloob la tasta. Verily, the hearts, they become rusty. So don't let your hearts get rusty. And the fourth gate, or the fourth door, is the scent. Smelling things that are Muhammad. And this is something that people just do not recognize and don't realize. That even in smelling things that is Muharram, because think about it. If you were, if a person, if an individual was to steal, for example, one of the testers at Sears shopping center, what exactly is it that he's able to do with this tester? The only thing he can do is smell it. So if you were to use that and you smell it, then that is a gateway to sh the shaitan opens up for you. It's haram because the haram in every object is in relation to the usage of that object. So if you have a tester that's been acquired through haram means, a perfume, a cologne, then what, what can you do that's haram with it? Nothing more than use it as a cologne. Or if you've been given a manna by someone, someone gave you cologne, someone gave you some sort of scent, and you put it on, and you don't have permission, due permission, then that usage of yours, and you know that person doesn't agree with you using your, their cologne, then that would be considered impermissible. That's a gate from amongst the gateways of shaitan. That's one of those things that people just don't recognize because it's so trivial. The benefit of a cologne is that you use it to smell good. Or that you use it to make yourself feel good by having that scent around you, by having that bukhur around you. And if you use it through haram means, then that would be considered impermissible. And hence you will be leading to a rusty heart. And all of that time that you spend trying to be scrupulous, trying to keep away from sin, trying to keep away from anything that's evil during Ramadan, that would go to waste. And after that is your hand. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said in a beautiful hadith, he said, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِمِثْلِ مَفْتَرَضْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ وَرِجْلَهُ الَّذِي يَمْشِي بِهَا وَيَدَهُ الَّذِي يَبْطِشُ بِهَا that a slave of mine, he continues to get closer and closer and closer by doing voluntary actions, closer to me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. By doing obligatory actions, sorry. And if a person wishes to get even closer, وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِ And if, you want, if he's done all of the obligations, he stayed away from all of that which is haram, then he can continue now to the voluntary actions. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this hadith Qudsi, that, that when he does this, and I begin to love him, then I become the sight that he views with. I become the hearing that he hears with. The feet that he walks with, the hand that he strikes with or the hand that he touches with. All of this time, if you said to yourself, you know what, I'm going to avoid touching a problem. If it is that I had a girlfriend, then I'll put her aside for a little while. Because I don't want to be touching that which is haram. If it is that I had a boyfriend, let me put that aside for a little while. Because I don't want to be touching that which is haram. If I did indulge in intergender relations where I'm not supposed to be doing that, let me put that aside. If I use this hand to steal something, I'm going to stop doing that now. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is overlooking. And all of this month I safeguarded myself, so don't let me get my heart rusted by using this hand in that which is muharram. And then the person continued, this wise man, he continued and said, and also the feet. And that's the last thing. Last of the six. If it is that I used these feet in nothing but the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal, I walked to the masjid. 
I went to the grocery store to buy food for my family. I avoided all of the places that are haram. If it was an LCBO that my feet used to take me to, it's the Zamzam store now. There's no Zamzam store. It's the masjid. If it was a club, then it'll be a dars. And you change all of those habits just by sticking on and just by protecting that structure which you've developed throughout the month of Ramadan.